During the bleak second lockdown, as autumn turned into winter, I decided to make the most of the last days of the season and make some of my favourite autumnal foods. So I spent a week making autumnal meals and documenting some of my favourites. It lifted my spirits and as we head into the colder months, I hope it will lift yours too. Please like this video if you're enjoying it and subscribe for more videos like this. So first of all, I started with a London fog. I first heard about these through Dodie, apparently they're on the Starbucks secret menu. You steep an Earl Grey tea bag and then you add hot milk and a few spoonfuls of vanilla syrup. I used my favourite Earl Grey tea bags, these tea pigs ones are chef's kiss. It's so warming and it's one of my favourite alternatives to a hot chocolate. I'd normally use a slightly sweeter almond milk but I used the unsweetened one that I had in the fridge. It didn't taste quite as good but it is just as comforting. I was going to make a porridge this week but I've not really been eating oats a lot lately so instead I thought I'd do a grapefruit with bitters which is my favourite way to eat grapefruit. Grapefruits are in season in the autumn and winter which is great for me because I love them. I prepare grapefruit the way my nana did. I chop it in half and then I cut around the edge of the flesh and through the segment pith with a little knife, finally adding a sprinkle of Angostura bitters. She used to add some brown sugar too but to be honest I prefer it without. About midway through the week I made a lentil shepherd's pie. My parents didn't cook very often when we were growing up and when they did it was usually something fast like a stir fry or pasta. When we had shepherd's pie it was always in a microwave packet and the kid in me used to want to make a proper pie one day. I think of a cottage or shepherd's pie as being the pinnacle of autumn. So this week I attempted to cook a lentil shepherd's pie based loosely off a recipe by Anna Jones. So I started by chopping the carrot, onion and garlic and frying them off. And then I added some herbs and spices, some rosemary, some cumin, some dried oregano. And then once they were soft, added the lentils and the tin of tomatoes, one tin of water and half of a stock cube. I also added some kale, more rosemary and a splash of white wine as well. I brought it to the boil and then I simmered it for 25 minutes. I chopped my potatoes into chunks as well and then on the side I boiled those for 15 minutes separately. Obviously when they were done I mashed those potatoes. Anna recommends that you use, I believe, cauliflower for this part but I want potato in my life. I love potatoes. I then put the whole pie together and threw it in the oven for 30 minutes. It was actually super good. I went back to it a day later for seconds and it was so much better after a day in the fridge as well. I guess all the flavours had got like more time to know each other. It was really, really good. I would definitely make this again. As a classic quick midweek meal, I made roasted sweet potato and feta tacos. This was adapted from a dish I get at Oaxaca sometimes. I don't go there very often anymore, but when I did, I remember these tacos so well. So I roasted up some sweet potatoes and onions and I mixed them with olive oil, smoked paprika and cumin. I'm trying to take a less is more approach to cooking without recipes at the moment because when I'm making things up as I go along I tend to overdo it and add 15 ingredients when 5 would have been more than fine. Once the sweet potato had roasted I added some chopped chorizo for the last 10 minutes of cooking. I do still sometimes eat meat, it's just not that often anymore. I mashed an avocado because how could we have Mexican inspired food without avo? And then I toasted off some sunflower seeds to mix with the feta. I'm trying to get more seeds and nuts into my diet at the moment as they're so good for you. And as you might know if you followed my hormonal journey, I'm really trying to like balance my hormones at the moment. Seeds and nuts are incredible for that. So I also had a tin of organic black beans to add and kind of have mashed with all of the ingredients in the tacos. But classic me, I completely forgot to heat them. <laughs> By the time everything else was ready, I just wanted to eat so I left it. Unfortunately, there weren't any traditional soft tacos in my area. I tried three stores, trust me. So Jack had normal wheat ones and I had a sweet potato wrap. This was, oh, so good and so warming. And also you're getting all that goodness of all those nutrients in your meal. You could have easily removed the truth from this and it would have tasted just as good. I would really recommend giving it a go. Let's talk soup because it is the big daddy of the autumn foods. Leek and potato soup reminds me of the bring and share lunches at Quaker meeting when we were younger in the freezing cold room above the main hall. There would always be two or three soups and one was always leek and potato. God, remember bring and share lunches? Those were the days. This was my first time making a leek and potato soup so it was quite a learning curve. 
Entertainingly, you cover the leeks and potatoes and have them steam as opposed to frying them to keep the fresh flavors, regardless of the cream and the milk you're about to add. This was a recipe from BBC Good Food. I love their recipes. So versatile and you can always find a simple recipe for anything you want to make. I also added a few sticks of rosemary for even more autumn flavors. By far the most challenging part was the blending. I am so messy, so I'm relieved the splashes only went as far as the counters. In hindsight, I would have gone for a slightly lighter soup, as after the first bowl, I didn't fancy another cream heavy meal for weeks. This had a whole 125 ml of cream in it, which for me is a lot. I don't really eat dairy that often, so it felt quite heavy. That first mouthful though, heaven. And finally, I attempted cinnamon buns. Ever since I went gluten-free, I have craved an American-style cinnamon roll, so I thought I'd try to make them. I committed a whole Saturday, had a nice afternoon to myself, and I sat down, just me and my oven, and my attempts at baking. It didn't turn out as expected. It turns out that making cinnamon rolls is shockingly quite hard, let alone when you remove the glutinous element of the recipe. I followed the minimalist baker's recipe, which uses both gluten-free flour and almond flour to create the dough. I accidentally made my batter too wet, which turned it into a cinnamon bread cake. I can't really recommend it when it comes to doing the rolling. It did not work especially not the slicing, let's not even go there. But ever the optimist, I still put them in the oven, slightly sludgier than I'd hoped. Unsurprisingly, they crumbled in my hands when I tried to eat them, but they tasted delicious, especially the cinnamon sugar marble that goes throughout the middle. I then wondered, how can I save these? So I iced them with a cream cheese icing because cream cheese icing makes everything taste good, no matter what is sitting underneath it. I think I'll leave cinnamon roll baking to the professionals in the future as this took me three hours and was not the stress relieving experience I had hoped for. But hey, we had a learning curve, we tried new things, personal growth, overall, totally fine. And now my freezer is full of cinnamon bun cake and I could work with that. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed my little dive into some autumnal recipes and you've enjoyed eating and baking along with me. Like this video if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this one. I make videos all about lifestyle and London and all the cool things I get up to. So if you'd like to see more of that, please subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.